Today I'm going to show you how we do two different epoxy and polyaspartic flake floors. One is going to be a black color and the other one's going to be a really light, almost white color. I'll show you the differences in the process and I'll tell you why you might not want to do this for your garage. I'm also going to show you some of our favorite tools that we like to use on projects like this. This video is sponsored by DeWalt. The first thing we have to do is prep the concrete. We get questions about this all the time. We always grind the concrete, even if it's brand new. We aren't grinding it to clean it, we're grinding it to make it rough. And that's gonna help any coating stick to the surface. We use a walk behind grinder for most of the floor, and then we're gonna use a DeWalt hand grinder for the edges, and the DeWalt HepaVac to control the dust during the grinding process. Now that the concrete is prepped, we're ready to install the coating. Once we're done grinding, we're gonna vacuum the entire floor to get it clean. The great thing about the DeWalt HepaVac is that it automatically cleans the filters as you're using it. If you use a regular shop vac, the concrete dust is gonna clog the filters pretty quickly. I made a list of all the DeWalt tools we use in this video. If you want more information about them, I'll leave a link in the description down below. On the first garage, we're gonna add black pigment to our primer. Even though we do what's called a full broadcast of flakes, we still want the primer to match because there's always a chance you might see it showing through the flakes in a few places. We squeegee it out on the floor. We're using a vapor barrier primer, and this particular primer calls for it to be installed at 160 square feet per gallon. Troy's using a notch squeegee that is going to gauge it on the floor for us so that we're putting it down at the exact right coverage. Then we come behind it and roll it to smooth it out and spread it evenly across the floor. You'll see a lot of info on the internet about one day floors and polyurea or polyaspartic primers. I get questions about which is better all the time. Both have benefits, but I prefer epoxy because it offers more vapor protection. I made an entire video that goes into the differences between the two. I'll leave a link for it at the end of this video. Once we get the epoxy spread, we're gonna broadcast flakes to rejection. And all that really means is that we're gonna throw a lot of flakes on the floor. Once we're done throwing flakes, we are done with this garage for the day. The next project I'm gonna show you has a really light gray flake color. It's almost a white color. This is the same process that I just went over, but the big change is that we're gonna put white pigment in the epoxy. People always ask me about our shoes. We wear spiked shoes that allow us to walk into the wet epoxy without leaving footprints and without the epoxy sticking to our feet. The epoxy self levels to some degree, so any holes that the shoes leave usually disappear on the run. Okay, we're done with this one for the day. If you wanna learn how to start a garage floor business, I created an online course that teaches you everything you need to know. If you want more info, it'll be the first link down below. And I'll also leave a link for a spreadsheet that I made so you can see exactly how much money you can make on projects like the ones I'm showing you today. We come back the next day and we need to clean the excess flakes and put on a polyaspartic top coat. We scrape all the flakes into a pile and we pick them up and put them back in the boxes so that we can reuse them on another job. If a floor has cut lines in it, I prefer to keep them visible in the finished floor. The cut lines are called control joints and they're cut into the floor when the concrete is poured so that hopefully the concrete will crack in those lines. We have an option to fill them if customers want a seamless floor, but most of our customers choose to leave them. Then we take the DeWalt blower and blow all of the flakes to one side of the room to get the floor clean. We used to use a corded electric blower for this step, but they were never really powerful enough to do this. So we love this new battery powered DeWalt blower because it's strong enough to get the floor completely clean. Now we're ready to apply the top coat to both of these floors. We're using the DeWalt drill to mix the polyaspartic top coat today. And we've switched to always using battery powered mixers because we don't really like having to run a court from inside of the garage, across the floor to our mixer outside. We pour the polyaspartic top coat directly on the floor. We spread it with a flat squeegee and then we roll it three or four times to get it completely smooth. Both of these projects turned out great. These are my favorite colors to do, but they do both have their disadvantages. The black floor is always gonna show dusty footprints. I would not recommend doing this if you don't have a paved driveway. And if you have an asphalt driveway and you get a white floor and you drive on it daily, it's always gonna show tracks from pulling in and out of the garage. Neither of these issues are really deal breakers for these colors. You just have to know that if you want the floor to stay looking clean, you're gonna to have to clean it more often than you would if you had chosen a color like this, this, or this. Our multicolored flakes that have some darker chips in the blend hide the dirt the best. So if you want the lowest maintenance possible, then you probably need to choose one of these colors. Every time I post a video about a flake floor, I get a hundred comments of people telling me that they drop stuff on the floor and that they can't find things on the floor. So if you're the type of person that works in your garage and you happen to be one of those people that drops stuff on the floor, then a multicolored flake floor is not gonna work for you. But if you want what my kids would say is the drippiest garage or the sickest garage, 
and you want to be able to find things that you drop on the floor, then black or white is definitely the way to go. Here's a link to that video I mentioned earlier. It shows you all the differences between a polyaspartic and a polyurea and an epoxy floor. Check that out if you want more information. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.